Why? All right, this is part three of the finale of this quick series. Again, love to uh, the sister tie out a battle for this drop, man, with the set four. We're talking the set four. To take the step. Hold up, Wayne. Hold up, man. The set four. Yet, Zyra. Zyra. This is breaking down a lot of drop, man. I mean, you surfing the wave, man. You might hear that pure water flowing, man. You got that pure water of Utah, Utah, Judah, always flowing. Very uh, beautiful stream, man. We're talking the moving water. We're talking life. And uh, we got cut off, man, right. And he was dropping on this wisdom of Solomon, so let's get back to it. Chapter 6. For mercy shall soon pardon the meanest. But mighty men shall be mightily tormented. For he which is Hawa over all shall fear no man's person. Neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness. For he hath made the small and great and, and careth for all life. But a sore trial shall come upon the mighty until you, therefore, O kings, do I speak that you may learn wisdom, kings, Negush, kings, Negush. Negush is kings, Negro, we're talking to you. Until you, Negro, do I speak that you, Negro, Negush, King, Naga, Khan, that you can, America, that you may learn wisdom, your mother, we're talking your framer and shaper, and not fall away. For they that keep holiness whole, holily shall be judged holy. And they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Wherefore set your afflict affection upon my words desire them and ye you shall be instructed wisdom is glorious your mother is glorious and never fadeth away yea she yea she your mother your framer is easily seen of them that love her and found of such as seek her do you seek mama Solomon is crying out for his mama. Drop your barrier and feel me on this. We're just talking about big mama. Do you cry out for her or do you believe the Christian version of just a lonely man walking to and fro? <laughs> walking to and fro by himself doesn't know a woman, but yet you have a house. Your house has a woman in it. Your divine house has a woman in it. Aren't you the divine image of what is above you? Another house, yes. A male and a female, yes. Order, yes. They are one, yes. She, she is easily seen of them that love her and found of such as seek her, mama. She, she preventive them that preventive them that desire her in making herself first known unto them. So first, she doesn't really she she prevents you that desire her in making herself first known. She's crafty. She doesn't really want you to know all the jobs. She wants to see where you're coming from. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail. For he shall find her sitting at his doors. To think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom. To think therefore upon your mama is the perfection of wisdom. And whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. Are you hijack free? Are you static free? Are you surfing the wave? Are you with your mama? Are you seeking her? Then you shall quickly be without any care, any fear. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her. You don't just say, I'm this. I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I'm wise. 
Oh, we're the wise man. Oh, we're the elders. You have to be with our mother to be wise. You can't just be a woman and say, I'm a woman, I'm wise. You have to choose up. You have to be with mama, big mama. To think therefore of big mama is perfection of wisdom. And whoso watcheth observe witnesses for her shall quickly be without be without any care, man. No care, no fear, hijack free. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her. Showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways and meeteth them in every thought. Is she with you wow. in every thought? Oh, wow. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. The beginning of wisdom is the desire of the discipline to achieve wisdom. And the care of discipline is love. Aha. And love is the keeping of her laws. Oh, I'm sorry. You just heard about your father's laws. But in the wisdom of Solomon, it says your mother's laws. So they are Hawa. They are both your framer and shaper. They are your mother and father's laws. And she's making sure you're keeping them so that she can now be with you. And love is the keeping of her laws. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. We're talking the cedar. We're talking as the uh, Azeroth. The Eretz, you know what I'm saying? The uh, Arizona, man, you know. Again, love to Priestley, man, dropping that drop. Love to Peru, man. Love to hire, man. Love to get into the root. J. Stu, what it do? Isaac, what it do? A.D., come on. Madison, man, let go. We're talking the truth about, man. We're talking Paco. We're talking C.J. Battle. We're talking the Battle family, man. We're talking driving up and vibing up in real time, man. Hire him, take the wheel. Let go. This ain't no play play. Man, love to our sisters, man. Love to Sister V. Man. Love to the Sister Larissa. Steady energy. Steady, man. Steady nourishment from our sisters. Our sister Ty all day. Love to Chef Candy, man. Love to the uh, sisters got a copper thread, man. <laughs> Love to the sisters in the copper thread, man. Dropping that drop, man. This is for you. This is for you. Love to Camellia dropping that drop. Let's go. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. All right, let's back it up. And love is keeping her laws. Our sisters, love is keeping her laws. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. Our sisters, you are a reflection of this. Our mother earth is in this frequency. You are an image of this. You are incorruptible in the frequency of big mama. Come back to her. Come back to your mama. Come back to your father. Come back to your parents. Come back home to your power. Have no power before our power that created you. You are not the creation's creation. They are the creation's creation. You are the creation. You are the image. Adam. And incorruption maketh us near unto Hawa, our framer and shaper, our mother and father. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. Solomon was asking for his mama so he can have a kingdom, man. Where's your kingdom, Negro? Where's your kingdom? Where's your mama? Where's big mama? She ain't rocking with you? Oh, you thought you was from Africa? You must not be rocking with big mama. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, man, if all you want to do is have thrones and scepters, O oh, ye kings of the people, then honor wisdom, your mama, that you may reign forevermore. Your mama, your mama wants the same thing you want. You want your kingdom, she wants it. 
Remember, framer and shaper, you are shaped in the image of your father. You are the vibration of the wa. But the ha is the ingredients that puts it all together. A mother makes a house a home. Honor wisdom that you may reign forevermore. Kings, Nagush, my niggas. As for wisdom, your mama, what she is and how she came up, I will tell you and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity and bring the knowledge of her into light and will not pass over the truth. As for your mother, what she is and how she came up, I will tell you and will not hide the mysteries from you. Neither will I go with consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. But the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world, and a wise king is the upholding of the people. Receive therefore instruction through my word, and it shall do you good. Now you keep dropping on that, we're just talking about wisdom. Let's get the rest of this. Oh yeah, we got the pure water flow, baby. ...of understanding, you are going to unlock regions of your consciousness, your soul, and wisdom will come forth. Huh. And isn't wisdom... Now, I want to back it up a little bit, because he says really? something very important. And when you begin to meditate uh -huh. on this, understand there is a prediction given to all, whether you succeed all the way, but no matter what, just by endeavoring, just by surfing the wave, to take the steps of understanding, just by surfing the wave. You are going to unlock regions of your consciousness, your soul, and wisdom will come forth. Wow, that sounds like the same story of the Hebrew Aleph Bet. He said, you know, if you surf the wave, you'll find wisdom, right? You got your Aleph Bet, you got your Picto Hebrew. All right, you got your Picto over here. All right, you got your Modern over here. You see how it all changes when they extract all the frequency out of it, turning it from a concrete knowledge to a abstract illusion. But the Picto is the strong, powerful leader. All right, the strong, powerful leader. We're talking about your creator, your power, your frame and shape right from the beginning. Every letter is within itself. There's no separation in these letters. It's not like English. Every letter is a reflection of all 22 letters. All of it's connected. So you have the powerful leader going into your house your tent, your family. Then you have the action. That's the surfing of the wave. We're, we're surfing the wave. We're dropping the drop. We're creating ripples, waves. And we're all feeling it. We're all the same ripple, the same wave. There's no separation, just like there's no separation in these 22 letters or your 22 amino acids. However you want to break it down, love to pop gold. And once you surf the wave, what did he say? You go through a door. You open levels of your consciousness. You go through a door. You open levels of your consciousness. There is a prediction a, given. A prophecy. To all, whether you succeed all the way, but no matter what, just by endeavoring to take the steps of understanding, Surfing the wave. You are going to unlock regions 
of your consciousness, your soul, and wisdom will come forth. And your mother will come forth. So when you are surfing the wave because your creator has put it in your heart, in your tent, in your family, in your house, and you put foot to action and you gather, choose a village, you gather, you walk, you move, you create ripples, you go through a door. He said consciousness has opened up all these doors, these portals. You go through a dial, you go through a doorway, and your mother is revealed. Hey! Now they translate it to a man with arms raised, and I'm saying that's your mama with her arms raised. He said, and wisdom is there. Wisdom is there. Your mother is there greeting you when you walk through the door. There is a prediction given to all whether you succeed all the way, but no matter what, just by endeavoring to take the steps of understanding, you are going to unlock regions of your consciousness, your soul, and wisdom mm. will come forth. Your mama will come forth. Your mama will come forth. Hey, ha, <gasps> wow. Your mama has her arms open waiting for you like a mama would. Not a man. Your mama. Look, reveal. There's a revelation. Your breath, your secure breath. Wow, that's the tent peg going. That's your foundation as an earth spread out like a tent. You have a foundation. Your wa is the foundation, the secure, the hook, the hook, the foundation, the security, the secure breath. When we say ha, wa, this is not hey, it's ah, ah, ha, ah, ah, wa. Then they change it to the va, ah, wa, right in our picto. We didn't have to take a super Hebrew scholar class for that. And we can teach our children straight from the picto, the creator's essence and the story going through the door, putting foot to action. Your mama with her arms raised and your father right behind her, the tent peg, the foundation, the security. Ha wa, then you have a rest, a zine, a a cut off, literally an axe, a cutting off, a nourishment. I wonder who's nourishing you. Probably your mama. It's all right here in the first seven letters of the picto. And these are all alive. This is all living and it's living through you and with you. Let go. And isn't wisdom really what we're talking about here? Big Mama. To understand the ancient arts that most religions today take their graft from. Hmm. And you can't disassociate it, no matter how much you may want to. It's here. It has been here, and it's been lost. Hmm. We're going to learn by the guest I've already had. They have shown you the heavens, the earth, the air, the fire, the four elements, are what in fact make us up in these physical bodies. And the mystery is the soul itself. But there are ways that we can learn. And if you will allow yourself, then we're going to learn 
some forbidden secrets. Oh, they want to know some drop. Let go. And isn't that what it's about? There is so much more to be learned. In fact, I can tell you how many modern theologians, theologists, however you want to say it, it's these truths that they can't stamp out. Mm. And so they simply term such things like this, well, these are the hidden scrolls. Because you... The mythology, the mythology, you become a myth. You become a myth. All right, man. So you can get the rest of that. About 10 minutes more in there. We're going to keep it keep it pushing, man. We're going to try to make this the finale, man. We're going to try. Um, no guarantees, though. No guarantee. Because we surfing the web. So we're just talking about creating people. You know what I'm saying? Remember how he was just dropping that. You know, Abraham was creating people, right? Golems. Called now. golems. They could create souls called golems. So... With this book, they were able to create souls called gold. Son of Samaria. His family was very prominent in the what we would call today the occult, the ancient black magic. I don't think there is such a thing as black or white, but magic. Magic was an integral part of all societies and cultures. It just was. And this text, when you begin to understand it, has a lot of correlating as well to the Vedic. So the Vedic scriptures date from the same period. Shem. Son of Noah. Now, many of you are probably already connecting the dots. You've watched enough of my videos. And by the way, if you haven't, go back and look at the Bloodline Invader series. Mm -hmm. There okay. is enough videos to already have set this foundation. Mm -hmm. But I know some of you are already saying, whoa, wait a minute, Wayne. Shem, son of Noah. Well, either the timelines hmm. have been either dramatically shortened or extended. <laughs> Depends on your point of view, right? Oh, yeah. Or someone who had no knowledge, who was putting together something, screwed up. Never thinking that eventually mankind would obtain a level of knowledge, not so much consciousness, but knowledge. Let's go back. This would indicate that Abraham was not alone in the use of the Sephar, but had companions. The Midrash states that if Abraham would have engaged in the secrets of creation by himself, he would have gone too far in emulating his creator. And he therefore worked together. Are you ready for this, folks? Shem. So he worked with Shem to create. Let's go back. Of let's, this manuscript. Let's get it. And one such is, Abraham went as God had told him, and Abraham took the souls that they had made in Haran, Genesis 12, 5. Genesis 12, now, I can five. hear some of you going right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, whoa, whoa, what do you mean, Wayne? Abraham made souls. Hmm. Yeah. And it just wasn't Abraham. Abraham actually used the powers of the Sephar to create people. To create people. Now... That's wild, isn't it? It's <laughs> pretty crazy. But again, Lada Uno, who said, man, this was going down. Of course, we got the splicing, 
uh, to natural by law. You know, talking about the hybrid creation. So now you got other versions of these creations, creations. The creations, creations. So you had a, you know, surfing this particular wave, a righteous creations, creation. Because you are the creator when you are in that frequency. So you do create as your father and your mother. You are them when you're in the frequency. So that, you know, I can surf that wave of, you know, being one with your creator and having the energy to create. But then there's a synthetic version, and I think this is where this synthetic frequency, this hijack, and synthetic people on this grid are coming from. This is where these enter the synthetic, enter the synthetic with no land rights, invading people's land for no reason, invading the American. Found here by the copper color race found here by the Euro European now applied to the descendant of Europeans born in America. Who created these synthetic people that think that they can come take your car? Because they have no land anywhere. Well, we need to see. We need to go back to this. I think we dropped this over a year ago as well. You know, I've been digging in the craze because Sacramento politics. You know what I'm saying? It's real important are you saying that we connect everything we've dug on to really have a nice huge dismount we're all preparing for a huge dismount right so we need to tally it all together not leave no babies behind all the babies we ever put out the water need to come for this jubilee now let's get this surf the wave of the creations creations let's go Big head scientist. Now, it's going to be a lot of hijacking this, obviously. But just surf the wave of the creations, creations. And you're going to find a lot of connectivity to go. Let go. Thousands of years ago, on this planet we call Earth, our planet was visited by various groups of extraterrestrial humanoid beings. These extraterrestrial humanoid beings had to leave their planet and seek refuge here on Earth because their home planet had been destroyed by evil. When these extraterrestrial humanoid beings arrived on Earth, they chose to take residence inside the center of the Earth because the surface of the Earth was inhabited by human beings. At this point in time in Earth's history, the human beings who lived on the surface of the Earth were all of one tribe, the Evanoid tribe. Since they live inside the Earth, these extraterrestrial beings have now become interterrestrial beings. The center of the Earth where these interterrestrial beings reside also contains an inner sun. The inner Earth has been called by a variety of names by cultures around the world including Shambhala by Buddhists. Now, take out this ball thing. Make it a flat plane. You're just talking beneath the plane. You're talking octaves beneath and octaves above. Take out this this uh, sphere. All right. You're not on a spinning ball. So on a flat plane, you have octaves above and octaves beneath. Let's go. Agartha by Tibetans, Kurnuji by the ancient Mesopotamians, the Duat or Amintā by the ancient Egyptians, Hades or the underworld by Europeans, Shivalba by the Mayans, and in modern times. The concept of the inner earth has given rise to what is called the hollow earth theory. Unbeknownst to many human beings, the activities of these beings which reside inside the earth has affected the course of human history and human development. The first and most noble of the beings which resides inside the earth is called the Shayuk. Compared to human beings, the Shayuk would be considered geniuses with exceptional intelligence and telepathic and telekinetic abilities. The Shayuk have a dark brown skin complexion, they are between 5 feet to 7 feet tall, and their heads, brains, and cranial capacity is much wider and larger than the average human. The Shayuk come to the Earth's surface occasionally to teach and to trade with certain tribes of human beings. The teachings of the Shayuk are so profound that when they come to the Earth's surface to teach, they are often called deities, gods, priests, prophets, messengers, and seers, and because of this fact, 
the Shiyuk have strict laws which limit the interaction of Shiyuk tribal members' contact with the humans on the surface. Now, everything they're saying is about the underworld, you know what I mean? So, you're talking about the thought shit and all this, but I want you to surf the wave of the creation. Creation, we know we're in the underworld. We know that we're from above the barrier. So, we know we're not matching this up with us like that, but doesn't mean that shit wasn't going down with Thoth and them in the halls of Amente. And what was the creation's creations? The Shayuk commonly interact and have mixed in with the surface world humans called the Dinakil or Dunakil, also known as the Afar people, in present-day Eritrea, Djibouti, Ethiopia, and Somalia. The chief of the Shayuk is named King Fyokor, and his daughter is named Princess Radiyya. Okay, now just surf the way because this is a certain phenotype, and I don't normally get into, you know what I'm saying, abstract, you know, phenotypes of this and that, but at the same time, if we're talking about you know, the so-called Ethiopian that we think of today, even though that's a very generic term, they would be favoring, you know, obviously this is an exaggeration, you know, but they would be favoring these people. It would be a certain type of head, you know, function, you know, sometimes balding, sometimes different things. So this might be their particular story, these particular dark Ethiopians, all right? Now we're talking about Ethiopians of the Orient and Ethiopians of the West. So don't get fooled. It's all tribal. You're going to hear them keep saying tribe, 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 tribe. So, you know, we're just trying to get to the skinny, man. No fat. And two of his brothers are named Amo and Yishak, who has always been jealous of his brother King Fulkor. King Fulkor's brother Amo had fallen in love with a surface-dwelling human female, and he would sneak to the surface world to visit her and would also pass himself off to the surface dwelling humans as a psychic and a magician and for these acts Amo was exiled to live on the surface 20 miles outside of the present day city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia as long as the people in the inner earth spent most of their life in the inner earth then they will not die however to be exiled to the surface world means a person from inner earth will eventually die like the mortals on the surface in the caverns adjacent to the Shayuk resides another group of nobles called the Sini. The Sinin are also highly intelligent, but also have a fighting spirit. The Sinin are between 5 feet to 7 feet tall and have a variety of complexions from yellow to brown, and they are hairless and are most noted for their cone-shaped heads. The Sinin commonly interact and have mixed with surface world humans including the ancient Egyptians, the Almecs in present-day Central America, the Mangatug people in the African Congo, and the Paracas people in Peru. The chief of the Sinin is named King Lamsa, and his daughter is named Princess Lucina, and his son is named Prince Atif. One of the wretched group of beings which resides inside the earth is called the Samin. The Samin are grotesquely obese, pale, with long elephant-like noses, and are very negative and aggressive. The Samin were actually the manifested evil grafted out of the Sinin on their home world prior to these beings arriving on earth. Since the Samin were grafted out of the Sinin, it is the responsibility of the Sinin to police and keep in check the evil activities of the Samin. It is said that an American named Richard Sharpshaver encountered the Sinin and called them the Turos, meaning interrogative robot, and he also encountered the Samin and called them Duros, meaning detrimental robot. One day, the wretched Samin raided and invaded the village of the Shayuk, stealing food and terrorizing the Shayuk family. When King Fulkor found out about this invasion by the Samin, he sent a telepathic message to King Lamsa stating that the Sinin has neglected their responsibility to keep the Samin in check, because the Samin were currently raiding and invading the village of the Shayuk. Upon receiving the telepathic message from King Fulkor, King Lamsa went with his brethren to the caverns of the Shayuk to stop the invasion by the Samin and to drive the Samin back to whence they came. After driving the Samin away from the lands of the Shayuk, King Lamsa apologized to King Fulkor, but tension remained between the Shayuk and the Sinin for some time after the incident. In order to make peace between the Shayuk and the Sinin, King Lamsa offered his daughter Princess Lucina to be a wife of King Fulkor. King Fulkor accepted the peace offering from King Lamsa, and in turn offered his daughter Princess Radiya to be the wife of King Lamsa's son Prince Atif, as was the custom, and there was peace in the land for some time between the two tribes of the Shayuk and the Sinin. However, King Lamsa's daughter Princess Lucina was angered and outraged because she did not want her father to give her away to be the wife of the Shayuk King Fulkor. Princess Lucina felt like an outcast and out of place living amongst the Shayuk people, and she did not like living by the strict laws of the Shayuk people. Princess Lucina always wanted to marry a man from her own people the Sinin, and she did not want to be married to a Shayuk man. 
One day Princess Lucina, now the unhappy wife of King Fuqur, met Yushok, the jealous brother of King Fuqur, and they conspired together based on their hatred for King Fuqur to have an illicit sexual affair together behind the back of King Fuqur. Princess Lucina and Yushok would travel to the surface world to the home of Emo, the exiled brother of King Fuqur and Yushok, and it is here where they would have their illicit affair. This affair between Princess Lucina and Yushok went on for months with them sneaking back and forth from the inner earth to the surface world, and eventually Princess Lucina became pregnant. In her pregnant state, Princess Lucina would not return to the land of the inner earth, but would remain at the home of Emo, and Yushok would stay with her. It was here in the home of Emo, 20 miles outside of the present-day city of Mecca Saudi Arabia, where the child Yakub was born to Yushok and Princess Lucina. The child Yakub being part Shayuk and part Sinim, had an enormous head the size of two men, and he also had two brains. Knowing that they could not return to the inner earth because their affair had now produced a child, Yushok and Princess Lucina decided to live and raise the baby Yakub for five years in the home of Ammo, 20 miles outside of the present-day city of Mecca Saudi Arabia. Yakub's father Yushok would work as a scientist and a priest amongst the humans on the surface calling himself by the title Mornuakan, the last high priest. Back in Inner Earth, Yushok and Princess Lucina had been missing for years, and eventually it was found out by King Fuqur about the affair between his wife Princess Lucina and his brother Yushok. King Fuqur ordered his soldiers to go to the home of his brother Ammo and arrest Yushok for his crime, and according to the laws of the Shayuk, Yushok was put to death. Princess Lucina's life was spared because she now had a child to take care of, but her punishment was to remain exiled to the surface world living in the home of Ammo, and to never return to Inner Earth. Depressed about her inability to return home, overwhelmed by her new responsibility to raise a child, and saddened by the death of her lover Yushok, Princess Lucina kills herself by committing suicide. The five-year-old child Yakub, now an orphan, is raised by his uncle Ammo, and the child Yakub is emotionally disturbed and rebellious because of the death of his parents. The child Yakub grows to hate his people the Shayuk, and he also grows to hate all dark complexion people because he blames them for the death of his parents. The child Yakub desires to have his revenge when he grows up. Yakub starts school at the age of four, and is teased and mocked about the size of his head by the surface dwelling human children. This mockery and teasing about the size of his head that Yakub experienced as a child created low self-esteem, and further infuriated the already deranged Yakub fueling his desire for revenge. Yakub's uncle Emma would tell Yakub stories about the beings in the inner earth and how the Samin were the manifestation of the evil grafted out of Yakub's mother's family the Sinin. One day, when Yakub was six years old, he was playing with two steel magnets in the home of his uncle Emma, and Yakub noticed the magnetic power of attraction and repulsion that unlike attracts, and like repels. By observing this, Yakub was inspired with a determined idea to create a tribe unlike any of the people on the surface of the planet, and this unlike tribe would be weak and wicked, and attract the other tribes on the surface of the planet, and rule over them with the knowledge of tricks and lies for 6,000 years. Any questions? So they created people. They created people. Yeah. Yeah. And it just wasn't Abraham. Abraham actually used the powers of the Sephar to create people. Now, that's wild, isn't it? You're asking me, well, just how can that be? Well, it just is. But it gets better. The scripture states the souls that they made in the pearl. This would indicate that Abraham was not alone in the use of the Sephar, but had companions. The Midrash states that if Abraham would have engaged in the secrets of creation by himself, he would have gone too far in emulating his creator. Mm. And he therefore worked together together. Are you ready for this, folks? Come on. Shem. Shem. The name. Shem. Let's take it back. Who else created people? Who else wanted the people? <laughs> so they created synthetic people specifically to rule over you. <laughs> for how many years? <laughs> Is this play play? By observing this, 
Yakub was inspired with a determined idea to create. Also, you see how they flip it. Remember, they're in the underworld, so everything's always duality, always flip it. So they have their Yakub being an evil Yakub, and then they're going to call this this savior that comes. They're going to call him Ishmael, of course, because they're, you know, Moab and, you know, the Sultan. You know, that's what they do. You know what I'm saying? So it just is what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, the, it's celestial and it's above the barrier. All right, there's Thoth in them, Muhammad in them, Christ in them, all of them are rocking together. Beneath the barrier in the underworld. If you're beneath the firmament, you're in the underworld right now. That's what they call hell on earth. You're in a dimension. You don't have your land. You don't even have your full body. You have a abstraction of your body. That you're trying to keep healthy with GMO foods and Monsanto. Damn, you got all the odds against you, but you gotta make it happen. You gotta cross over. Now here's their duality. Now listen out and dodge the hijack. The tribe, unlike any of the people <laughs> on the surface of the planet, and this unlike tribe would be weak and wicked. And it's unlike tribe, they're different. They're your opposite. They look opposite of you. They have recessive genes. It's just is what it is. They're unalike. Now they want you to think they're dominant. In reality, they know the truth. Now listen close. Track the other tribes on the surface of the planet and rule over them with the knowledge of tricks and lies for 6,000 years. 6,000 years. Upon coming to this realization, Yakub looked up at his uncle Emo and said, Uncle, when I get to be an old man, I am going to make a people who shall rule you. Mm. Uncle Emo said, What will you make? someone to make mischief and cause bloodshed in the land. Yakub responded to his uncle Ammo by saying, Nevertheless, uncle, I know that which you do not know. And it was at that moment, the boy Yakub first came into the knowledge of just who he was, born to make trouble, break peace, kill and destroy, and be the enemy to the Ebonoid people of Earth. So this is who you're calling Satan or Mastema. You know what I'm saying? This is who, he's like, I know my role. I'm chaos. I know who I am. I know that which you do not know. I am chaos. I have a certain time to do things. I have a certain dominion, the celestial, which is the lower heaven. So when you hear them talking about going to the lower heaven, they're going up. They're going so-called up to the stars, right? To the celestial. That's their lower heaven. They can't reach higher heaven. They can't go beyond the greater light. Thoth has to outrun the hounds of the barrier every time and move in angles, right? This is a man. <laughs> they say the truth is stranger than fiction, man. So let's hear it out, man. Let's let's just hear it out. Yakub knew in order to accomplish his plan, he would have to study science, biology, and genetics. Mm. Yakub was a child prodigy in school. Being exceptionally smarter than the surface dwelling humans he was going to school with, and by the age of 18, Yakub had finished all of the colleges and universities of his nation. While in college, Yakub was mocked and teased being called the big head scientist. After graduating from the colleges and universities of his nation, Yakub began to preach a new doctrine to the people in the city. Yakub called his new doctrine Tricknology, and his holy book was called the Book of Trick. Tricknology and physicology from G to G. Makes a nigga like me see clearly. I mean, I'm just talking about the LBC. You know what I mean? Tricknology. It's always been in front of us, man. So, all of this shit is tricknology. It's all coming from Mr. Thoth, Mr. Tricknology. Christianity, Islam, Judaism. All of this is tricknology. Because what does it take you out of? It takes you out of your right mind. And what does your right mind say? Who are you? Not what do you believe. No one gives a shit what you believe. Because what you believe does not affect reality. You need to seek reality and be humble. You need to be, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> pure water, man. You, you got to surf the wave. You, you got to know the truth got you surrounded. You're already swimming in it. Sink or swim, man. Reality. 
Tricknology is the game that's being played. This is 440 Hertz on purpose with a design. Technology of 120 degrees. Uh. Yakub taught that if people followed his doctrine, then they would be able to rule the world for 6,000 years mm. and make slaves out of everyone else on the earth. Yakub made such impressions on the people that many people began following him. The children who once mocked and teased Yakub were now requesting to be part of what he was teaching. The girls who once laughed at Yakub were now women who desired him. Oh yeah, so he got all the he got all the ladies now, right? Now, how does this relate to the eclipse and uh, this 929, September 29th, you know what I'm saying? Alignment, you know, this this uh, this Virgo, which represents the nation of Israel, they say, and she's giving birth, this birth pains in Mother Earth currently. How does it relate? Because they say this alignment hasn't happened in 7,000 years. Now, he said over 6,000 years of rulership, this technology will be in play. And later they say specifically 6,600, which means what? It's damn near 7,000 years. Now you got the same sign popping up from 7,000 years ago. It's game over, man. Body bad. As Yakub's teachings spread, he made more and more converts to his new doctrine. And the power of Yakub's doctrine began to intimidate the king of the surface dwelling humans who ordered to have Yakub and all of his followers thrown. Look at the fez. What is going on? It's right in your face, bone. We're talking the Confederacy. Psalms 83. The other melanated races. Because he specifically was creating tribes. Literally creating tribes. Listen, listen, listen close. He made more and more converts to his new doctrine, and the power of Yakub's doctrine began to intimidate the king of the surface dwelling humans who ordered to have Yakub and all of his followers thrown in prison. The police arrested all of Yakub's followers and put them in prison, and filled up all of the prison cells with Yakub's followers. However, there was not enough space to put all of Yakub's followers in jail, therefore there were still some people free who were spreading Yakub's teachings. So this right here is a more on more war. Wow, when you really look at it, this thing. <laughs> because you always had good and you always so. We want to be clear. We want to be pure water here. We don't want to just represent <clears throat> something and demonize something and say, uh, you know, this is all this and all that. We want to, you know, really be clear. When we talk Egypt, you had good pharaohs. You had good Egypt. You had good Babylonians. You had good Moors. You had good Moab, you know. Case in point, Ruth the Moabite, all right? So, you know, this Moabite king, or, you know, he was against. So they had, this was like a family squabble. What we're really seeing from this underworld situation is like an internal family squabble in itself. And how then they themselves had to go to war against the synthetic people that their family member was creating over here who ended up wiping everybody out or so the story's told i'm just trying to surf the way with you all right all right put on your rain boots the police notified the king that they did not have enough space for all of yakub's followers and at that point the king decided to go to yakub's prison cell and negotiate a deal the king went to visit yakub in his prison cell and the king said so you are mr yakub Yakub said, yes, I am. The king said, Yakub, I have come to see if we could work out some agreement that would bring about an end to this trouble. Whoa, what would I've come to seek a treaty with this evil. Here's a deal with the devil. He's making a deal with the devil. Remember, he's pure chaos. He knows who he is. He's created to destroy order, to fuck everything up. He says, let me make a deal with you, devil. Let's make a treaty. Let go. You suggest. Yakub said to the king, if you give me and my followers everything to start a civilization and furnish us with money and other necessities of life for 20 years, I will take my followers and we will leave. Wow. The king was pleased with the deal offered by Yakub and agreed to take care of them for 20 years 
until Yaqub's followers were able to go for themselves. So he helped Satan build his army. And for that reason, they are all a confederacy. Psalms 83. With permission of the Pharaoh, can they move? They made a deal. They are in agreement against who? The so-called Negro. Copper color race foul here. I'm talking about the real American of the Khan dynasty. Let's go. After 20 years, the government began to make preparation for the exiling of Yaqub and his followers. The king ordered everyone rounded up who was a believer in Yaqub's doctrine, and they took them to the seaport and loaded them on ships. Uh. When Yaqub and his followers departed, there were a total of 59,999 followers plus Yaqub making 60,000 total people on 100 ships. Yaqub and his fleet of ships departed from an area 20 miles outside of the present-day city of Mecca, Saudi Arabia, and set sail on the Red Sea, and sailed all the okay, way- Okay, remember Thoth said he went to the land of the hairy barbarians, Barbaria, Tartaria, Barbaria. Alright, so we're over here rocking. Remember the Hyborian war map with the Vindia? That's what's popping over here right now. They around the continent of Africa to go to their destination, which was the area which is currently <clears throat> called the island of Patmos, or Palong. In the Aegean Sea. While on the ships sailing around Africa to get to the area which is currently called the island of Patmos, Yakub began the second part of his plan which was a eugenics human gravitation experiment. Even though all of the people on the surface of the earth were of one tribe, the Ebonoid tribe, there was still some variation within the Ebonoid tribe, and Yakub began to highlight these differences, and Yakub taught these people that they were special, because Yakub planned to use them to graft his new tribe. Yakub developed his theory by studying his own genetics under the microscope and noticing that there were two different genes in him. One gene that was dark from his father Yishak's family, the Shuyuk, and the other that was not dark from... Dark and light. So when you have, you know what I'm saying, this, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying, discrimination, this dark and light thing going on everywhere, this philosophy of dark and light, here's the nucleus, it, here's the precipice, here's the beginning. Here's where it started, according to this way. So he started genetically engineering dark and light to separate the dark from light because he hated his uncle and he hated the dark. So he said, I'm going to create the most white motherfuckers, most white recessive synthetic shit on earth, and they're going to fuck you up for 6,000 years. Take that. From his mother, Princess Luce, and his family, the scene. Yakub began to have children with the women on this ship, and the babies which were born that were a lighter complexion he would spare their life, but the babies which were born which were of a darker complexion, Yakub would have thrown overboard into the ocean. Bang. Now you got the paper bag test, now you got everyone consciously thinking, oh light scan this, dark scan this. It's this constant fight between dark and light, and where did it start, where's the philosophy, where's the inception, you have to reach into your into your heart man and take it out you got to reach you got to remove all the images in your heart all this is brainwashing inception that has divided you and know where it's come from you were getting to the root of it all Yakub felt if he could successfully separate the darker gene from the lighter gene then he could graft the ebonoid tribe into its last stage which would be albinoid Yakub planned to albinoid. create a tribe of albinoids which he discovered was weaker than the ebonoid gene which would be unalike, to rule the Ebonoid nation for 6,000 years. When Yakub's followers found out about his new wicked plan, and learned that he was killing and throwing babies overboard into the ocean, 95% of his followers lost their loyalty to Yakub, and abandoned his mission and jumped ship. As Yakub's fleet of ships sailed around Africa, people who lost loyalty to his mission would jump ship into the areas which are now Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Djibouti, Somalia, Mozambique, Namibia, Senegal, Morocco, and Tunisia. 10% of the original 60,000 of Yakub's followers betrayed Yakub and jumped ship. 85% of the original 60,000 of Yakub's followers jumped ship because they were confused why he would do such a horrible thing, leaving only 5% of the original 60,000 of Yakub's followers who actually made it to their destination of the island of Patmos in the Aegean Sea. As king on his island, Yakub set up birth control and planned parenthood laws which would contribute to his plan of negative <laughs> eugenics and genocide to breed his albinoid tribe. What are they doing today with planned parenthood and this eugenics and all this stuff, man? It's the same program. They're, do you see any separation between that and this? 
this and that. Who are you then and who are you now? Put it together. Yakub made it a law that only the lighter complexion people could have children. Uh. People with darker complexions were put to death, and when children were born, nurses were ordered to have the darker babies killed by pricking the brains with a sharp needle as soon as the child's head was out of the mother, wow. but the lighter babies were allowed to live. Yakub's wow. aim was to kill and destroy the Evanoid nation. Yakub would have the dead bodies of the darker babies fed to wild beasts, and if they could not find the wild beast to feed the bodies to, they would take the dead bodies of the babies to a cremator to be burned. This is the level of intense hatred Yakub had in his heart. This process went on for years on Yakub's island as Yakub trained his sons and grandsons to carry on his work after he died. Yakub died at the age of 150 years old from a brain tumor. As the father of Trichnology, Yakub taught his people a doctrine which would enable them to rule the world for 6,000 years. Yakub also taught his people that God is a spirit and a spook and not a man. And Yakub was the founder of the doctrine that unalike attracts and like repels. Unalike attracts and like repels. So when they say opposites attract, he founded that doctrine. Opposites attract. Go get your opposites. Anything like you, repel it. Opposites attract. That makes you hate everything that's like you. Do you see the trick knowledge, fool? Is it play play? Who are they and who are you? Chaos and order. After 200 years on Yakub's island, all of the darker babies had been done away with, wow. and all babies were born of a new tribe called the Rubedoid tribe. After another 200 years, all babies were born of an even newer tribe called the Citronoid tribe. And finally, after another 200 years, which makes 600 years total, all the babies born on Yakub's island were of Yakub's desired albinoid tribe. It took six Birth of the so-called Caucasian. But they're not really Caucasian because they're not, you know, from the Caucasus. They just were kind of driven there. You're going to hear them talk about they were kind of trapped there, you know. They were created by creations. And this, look how long, he's going to say it took 900 years for this. But let's go. 600 years to breed Yakub's albino. Or 600 years. Tribe. And every imagination of their heart and all of their actions were wicked continuously. The evilness every, of the albinoids not only affected themselves. Every imagination was wicked. Every imagination. Listen, man. Listen, man. Okay. <laughs> the track record speaks for itself. Yakub's island were of Yakub's desired albinoid tribe. It took 600 years to breed Yakub's albinoid tribe, and every imagination of their heart and all of their actions were wicked continuously. The evilness of the albinoids not only affected themselves, but also affected the other peoples of the world. Yakub's albinoids returned to the city where they were exiled from. Once back in the city, it took only six months for Yakub's albinoids to cause chaos and war amongst the Evanoid people. Mm. The king of the Evanoid people realized that it was Yakub's albinoids who were causing all the trouble. <laughs> now remember, he helped them. He has a treaty because they're all the same people. And now he's trying to control the synthetics. So they boot him out. And the king made a decree to drive Yakub's evil albinoids from amongst them. <laughs> The king rounded up all of Yakub's albinoids and stripped them of their clothing and put an apron on them to hide their nakedness and <laughs> Come on, man. sent his army with them across the desert to cross the burning sands into the place which is modern day Europe. Yakub's albinoids were roped into the mountains and caves and the king's army would patrol the area to make sure Yakub's albinoids stayed in the mountains and caves for 2000 years to ensure that these people are kept away from the Evanoid people. During this 2,000 year period living in the mountains and caves without anything to start civilization, Yakub's albinoids became shameless, and lost all sense of shame and started going nude, and in the winter they wore animal skins for clothes and grew hair all over their bodies and faces Neanderthals. Natural by law. Subscribe to Natural by law and get all the drugs. Hybrid Neanderthals. This is why when they look at the DNA sequence they get to five to seven percent neanderthal dna out of everybody except us we have zero they said ah oh, because we had a different migration pattern nah man nah man 
it's the breeding, it's the splice, it's the breeding, it's the creation's creation. We're just keeping it real. You know what I mean? This ain't no, you know, battering session. We're in it for the real spill. And you should be too. Because with the drop, you know, comes healing for everyone. Because even as an albino, you can be purified back to 432. But you have to choose up. You're going to hear how even they thought of doing this. Let's go. Like all the other wild animals, Jakub's albinoids tamed the wolves and dogs to live in the caves with them. And after some time, the dog held a high place among their family, becoming their best friend. After 2,000 years of living in the caves, the wickedness of Jakub's albinoids was observed, and an ebonoid man named Moshe was sent to civilize them. Moshe. <laughs> all right, man. Dodge. <laughs> That's the hijack. Now they want to send Moses with Ten Commandments to civilize albino people. Alright. <laughs> Remember they're coming from the underworld. So they're going to fuck with you a little bit. But you, you, you got to applaud these cats <laughs> for the creativity. So now Moses is freeing albinos, man. I've never seen this before. But uh, yeah. Alright, let's go. Call <laughs> Yakub's albinoids out of the caves. However, once out oh, of the caves. Yeah. Yakub's albinoids killed Moshe. Free from the caves. What? Do you hear these hijacks? I told you to dodge. I told you it was hella hijacking here, but I just, I just didn't see that part. So then they killed Moses. The white people killed Moses because he freed him from the caves. Come on, man. Damn, that was crazy. Let's go. Yakub's albinoids went on a rampage throughout the earth, conquering and subjecting the ebonoid people hitting one against the other using the idea of divide and conquer. Yakub's albinoids began to execute Yakub's plan for them to rule the world for 6,000 years. A man named Mahamdu attempted to teach Yakub's albinoids to convince them to end their devilishment. However, this was still 1,400 years before the end of Yakub's albinoids 6,000 year period of dominion over the earth. And so, Yakub's albinoids ruled the earth for 6,000 years spreading their devilishment, evil, pain, suffering, and oppression to the ebonoids. Any questions? Invasion? Papal bull? Let's go. ...people of the earth is designed by the big head scientist Yakub. The events of Yakub occurred approximately 6,600 years ago, and the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth foresaw the birth of Yakub 15,000 years ago. 6,600 years. Remember this uh, September 29th thing is lining up 7,000 years ago. Let's go. This history, or future, of Yakub and his people was predicted and foretold by the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth 8,400 years before the birth of Yakub. The 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth were aware of the birth of Yakub, and they were aware of the things Yakub would do before Yakub was even born. The 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth predicted that in the year 8,400, this man Yakub would be born, and when this man was born, he will change civilization and the world, and produce a new tribe of people, who would rule the original Ebonoid people for 6,000 years, from the 9,000th year to the 15,000th year. After the 6,000 year rule of Yakub's people, the Ebonoid people would give birth to one whose wisdom, knowledge and power would be infinite. One whom the world would recognize as being the greatest and mightiest since the creation of the universe, and that Yakub's old warring wicked world would be removed and destroyed, and the Ebonoid nation would be restored into power to rule forever and to establish a world of peace and righteousness. This great redeemer of the Ebonoid people who was predicted by the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth to bring balance back into the world, is known under many names, titles, and attributes including, he who has no equal, he who there never was anyone like, the supreme being, the mighty, the wise, the best knower, the light, the life giver, the guide, the all powerful, he who knows how to reproduce the universe. Life giver, reproduce, sounds like Joshua the seed, Joshua the seed of Nun, seed of Nun, of Na. The life giver, the seed, the seed, the seed. <laughs> Joshua the sprouting seed, Nun, sprouting seed, seed of, seed of Nun. They're going to try to make their Jesus Messiah, but you already have a Hawashua. Who brought you to your promised land? Let's go. Universe and the people of his choice. But his mother calls him Yashmal. Yashmal was the son of Princess. Yashmal. All right, we're talking Joshua. But, you know, we're just we're surfing their way. They're telling the story their way. Everybody wants to tell the story their way. We're just getting the drop. 
as Radilia of the Shuyuk family, and Prince Atif the Sinin family. Yashmal's parents, Princess Radilia and Prince Atif, married each other in order to establish peace between their two quarreling tribes. However, the union of Princess Radilia and Prince Atif was more than mere chance, their union was specifically guided, selected, and arranged by the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth who were also genetic engineers. They knew that the offspring of the union between Princess Radiya and Prince Atif would be the personification of order to balance out and offset the chaos of Yakub, who was the offspring of Yishak and Princess Lusana. Yashmal began his education on the day he was born, as is the custom amongst members of the Shayuk. It would be unheard of for a member of the Shayuk to wait until the age of four to start school unless the child was mentally handicapped. Being part Shayuk and part Sinim, Yashmal's head was noticeably larger than the other members of the Shayuk and Sinim. Yashmal had an enormous head, two brains, and a third enlarged pineal gland which sat in the center of his two brains, making the top of his head appearing to be shaped like three orbs. Amongst the Shayuk and Sinim, Yashmal would be called the big head scientist. However, amongst these tribes, this statement was not taken to be an insult, but rather a compliment, alluding to the individual's intelligence in the same way that saying big muscles alludes to an individual's strength. Since Yashmal was raised in his native land amongst his people who looked like him, he did not suffer from the same ridicule, mockery, and low self-esteem which plagued his cousin Yakub who grew up in a foreign land amongst other than self and kind. As a child, Yashmal was an exceptional prodigy and a genius. Yashmal was also told stories of the evil activities which transpired at the hands of his cousin Yakub. One day, when Yashmal was nine years old, he was playing with two electromagnets in the home of his grandfather King Fiokor, and noticed that electrons flowing in the same direction through two electromagnets would create the magnetic phenomenon of attraction, and that electrons flowing in opposite directions through two electromagnets would create the magnetic phenomenon of repulsion. By observing this, Yashmal realized that like flowing energies create attraction and unlike flowing energies create repulsion. Thus, Yashmal was inspired with a determined idea to direct the flow of mental energy of the ebonoid people of the planet in the same direction so that the ebonoid people of the planet will be unified again to be strong and righteous, and bring peace and balance back to the earth forever. Upon coming to this realization, Yashmal looked up at his grandfather King Fukur and said, Grandfather, when I get older, I am going to make a people strong and righteous, and I will eliminate the devilishment which has come into the world to show and prove real power and wisdom, and... I am going to make a people strong and righteous. Listen again. We're talking about the creation creator. So this is another power of creation other than the one that old boy did with the, you know, creating the albino. This is a higher level, a higher degree. And bring peace and balance back to the earth forever. Upon coming to this realist, two electromagnets would create the magnetic phenomenon of attraction and that electrons flowing in opposite directions through two electromagnets would create the magnetic phenomenon of repulsion. By observing this, Yashmal realized that like flowing energies create attraction and unlike flowing energies create repulsion. Thus, Yashmal was inspired with a determined idea to direct the flow of mental energy of the ebonoid people of the planet in the same direction so that the ebonoid people of the planet will be unified again to be strong and righteous, and bring peace and balance back to the earth forever. Upon coming to this realization, Yashmal looked up at his grandfather King Fukur and said, Grandfather, when I get older, I am going to make a people strong and righteous, and I will eliminate the devilishment which has come into the world to show and prove real power and wisdom, and bring back peace and supreme balancement forever. Grandfather King Fukur said, What will you make, someone to establish order and cause harmony in the world? Yashmal said, Man plans, and I plan, and surely I am the better planner. And it was at that moment, the boy Yashmal first came into the knowledge of just who he was, born to establish order, bring peace, build, create, and be the redeemer to the ebonoid peoples of earth. Man plans, and we plan, and surely we are the better planet. Drop Mason. It is common for members of the Shayuk tribe to finish all of the coursework taught in all of the colleges and universities of the surface world by age 9, but Yashmal finished by age 7. If it took a member of the Shayuk tribe until age 18 to finish all of the coursework taught in all of the colleges and universities of the surface world, then that person would surely be looked at as being mentally handicapped or mentally retarded. Yashmal finished all of the advanced universal sciences which are taught by the schools in the inner earth by the time he was age 12, even though it is common to finish this coursework by age 15, but Yashmal was a genius and a prodigy. After finishing school, 
Yashmal met with the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth and told them of his intention to travel to the surface world as a bringer of peace and redeemer of the Evanoid people. Yashmal was tried and tested by the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth, and once found worthy, at age 18, Yashmal traveled to the area presently known as the Mwanza region near the countries of Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya in Africa. Yashmal called his new doctrine Teach Knowledge and his holy book was called the Book of Teach Knowledge of Se Alright, so you got the Teach Knowledge 720. <coughs> 7 plus 2 is 9. Teach Knowledge. He's in the 9. Let's go. 720 degrees, which was in a question and answer format designed to get the mental energies of the listeners flowing in the same direction which would in turn create unity, harmony, and attraction amongst kindred. Yashmal's new doctrine was so powerful that he had millions of people from all of the tribes on the earth coming to hear his message and aspiring to be a part of his mission. However, from the millions of followers that he gained on the surface of the earth, Yashmal only selected 144,000 which he called the chosen few. Alright man, is it play play? He got 144,000 chosen ones. To be a part of the next phase of his plan. And when Yashmal and his chosen few departed, he told the people on the surface of the earth he would be back in one day. So Yashmal selected 41,150 ebonoid females and 41,140 ebonoid males for a total of 82,290 people from the original ebonoid tribe. Yashmal selected 10,285 rubedoid females and 10,285 rubedoid males for a total of 20,570 people from the rubedoid tribe. Yashmal selected 10,285 citronoid females and 10,285 citronoid males for a total of 20,570 people from the citronoid tribe. And Yashmal selected 10,285 albinoid females and 10,285 albinoid males for a total of 20,570 people from the albinoid tribe, which made 144,000 people total. Yashmal took his followers into the inner earth through an opening beneath the Great Lake in the present day area known as the Mwanza region in Africa to begin his eugenics genetic engineering experiment of grafting the various tribes of people on the earth back into the original Ebonoid tribe. Yashmal being a master genetic engineer who was all wise, right, and exact, knew that it was not necessary to kill anyone in order to accomplish his goal because he had knowledge of the science of dominant and recessive genes. Knowing that the Ebonoid tribe was the first, then Yashmal knew the Ebonoid gene would be the most dominant, followed by the Rubedoid gene. The most dominant, the Ebonoid, we're just talking about the original signature, we're talking about you. You have the most dominant gene on Earth. Followed by the Citronoid gene, and lastly followed by the Albinoid gene. While inside the inner Earth with his followers, Yashmal applied the science of dominant and recessive genes to design and engineer a system of arranged marriages by which the offspring born from each arranged marriage would have certain desirable qualities, and in time over a period of 900 years, all of the derivative tribes would have been grafted back into the original Ebonoid tribe. Yashmal also observed that the gene of the Ebonoid woman was the most dominant gene, and so Yashmal established the following rules of arranged marriages amongst his followers. 10,285 Ebonoid women and 10,285 Ebonoid men would marry to keep the Ebonoid gene strong and pure. 10,285 Ebonoid women would marry 10,285 Rubedoid men. 10,285 Ebonoid women would marry 10,285 Citronoid men. 10,285 Ebonoid women would marry 10,285 Albinoid men. 10,285 Ebonoid men would marry 10,285 Rubedoid women. 10,285 Ebonoid men would marry 10,285 Citronoid women. 10,285 Ebonoid men would marry 10,285 Albinoid women. Yashmal would also keep 10 Ebonoid women as wives for himself. The men and women were required to get married by age 19, and each couple were to have two children. Living in the inner earth where he was from, Yashmal was continuously regenerated and rejuvenated and did not die like his cousin Yakub on the surface of the earth. Yashmal was able to teach, socialize, laugh, play with the children, enjoy life, and observe the generations and progression of his followers over the centuries. The offspring of the Ebonoid woman and the Ebonoid man would always be Ebonoid. The offspring of the Ebonoid woman and the Rubedoid man would also be Ebonoid because of the strength of the Ebonoid woman's genes. The offspring of the Ebonoid woman and the Citronoid man would be Ebonoid 75% of the time, and Rubedoid 25% of the time, because of the strength of the Ebonoid woman's genes. 
The offspring of the ebonoid woman and the albinoid man would be ebonoid 75% of the time, and citronoid 25% of the time, because of the strength of the ebonoid woman's genes. The offspring of the ebonoid man and the rubetoid woman would be ebonoid 75% of the time, and rubetoid 25% of the time. The offspring of the ebonoid man and the citronoid woman would be rubetoid. The offspring of the ebonoid man and the albinoid woman would be citronoid. With the laws of arranged marriages in place, it would take Yashmal's chosen 144,000 people 46 generations over the course of 900 years to be grafted back into the original ebonoid tribe. During this time, for some generations recessive genes would tumble forward. After 12 generations, all of the albinoids had been grafted back into the citronoid, rubenoid, and ebonoid tribes. After another 16 generations, all of the citronoids had been grafted back into the rubetoids and ebonoids. After another 18 generations, all of the rubetoids had been grafted back into the ebonoids, wow. leaving only the original ebonoid tribe. Leaving only the OGs. The copper color race found here. You go ahead and surf the wave, man. How we doing? We got some time. Got a little bit, man. Love to Lincoln, man. Look to the family link in the left, man. Drop this, uh, this, uh, PDF here, man. This, uh, this link. The poisoning of mankind. Blood types. Copper deficiency. Evolution theory and Illuminati by C.A. Bothelia in 2006. This is breaking down the blood type. Sorry, I don't know, man. I need some pure water if we're going to do it. <laughs> we always got the pure water flowing, man. If we're going to do it. At least 95% of the population who have blood type O and A, which are the thinnest blood and lowest blood volume. Now, when you get the rest of this, he's going to tell you that they have to continuously, you know what I'm saying, graft themselves back in. Now, he did it for them, but if he didn't do it for them and they know it today, then they become, you know what I'm saying, either sterile or impotent or they can't have children after a few generations. They have to keep mixing back in to original man, to copper color race. They have to keep mixing back in to you in order to, you know, assure their secession. That's fact. That's science. So when we deal with the poisoning, we're talking about the copper deficiency. Again, love to link it, man. This is very important and you definitely want to make sure that you uh you know got the drop on this. Now, they keep calling you um iron deficient, but really you're copper deficient. You're the copper color race. You're copper deficient. They need iron. You need copper. They're iron people. They're synthetic. They need iron. You don't. You need copper. They're replacing your copper with iron making you synthetic like them. The thinnest blood and lowest blood volume in blood B having copper deficiency. Wow. Oh, wow. Due to slow poisoning from blood thinners, alkalizing chemicals, copper blinders, and copper antagonists that have saturated the food and food chain. So this is an attack to take the copper out of your diet so that you are not who you are. You know what I'm saying? You you take your life force away. These poisons have altered and damaged the wow. protein's DNA wow. of the blood and other tissues of the body. Copper is essential in the formation of normal healthy proteins, that is, normal amino acid sequences, and that it provides a balanced pH state for the blood and tissues. Man, this is some health drop, man. Love to link in the left. Copper. Copper color race. Hey. The copper color race found here. Negro, wake up. You're being poisoned. Copper is essential. You need this in your diet. But how are we talking? How, it's so easy to get in your diet. We're going to show you how easy this is to correct this problem, so-called Negro. 
Copper is essential in the formation of normal healthy proteins, amino acid sequences, and that it provides a balanced pH state. Your balance is good for your melanin, it's good for your balance, your metabolism, your weight, your energy. For the blood and tissues, copper is acidic at pH of 5.5 and is important in providing a balance of numerous alkaline and acidic nutrient minerals. Balance. Let's get it right here. Copper functions maintain mineral balance, thus a balanced pH with normal blood viscosity by functioning as the primary antioxidant in the body. When the blood is of normal viscosity with optimum blood flow, the blood is able to rid the body of toxic metals, chemicals, and any overload of any minerals, therefore thereby retaining and balancing out the nutrient minerals. It has been documented that a decrease in antioxidant protection caused by copper deficiency goes beyond a decrease in activity of copper dependent enzymes by inducing a wide range of disturbances in the other enzyme system. This is because sufficient copper levels are extremely important in the formation and or activity of num numerous other enzymes involved in the formation of bone and connective tissue, immune system, cardiovascular, the heart, brain, liver, blood vessels, pigmentation, collagen, elastin, blood clotting factors, all other glandular systems and many others. Thus, it can be stated that cert with certainty that copper, copper, copper is the single most important nutrient in the body. Thus, it can be stated with certainty that copper is the single most important nutrient in the body. This is why copper is the target for de deprivation and depletion. So they're, de they're depriving you and depleting you. Don't you know it's true? They're depriving you and depleting you. Negro, don't you know it's true that copper is the single most important nutrient in the body? I'm gonna drop this link. You got it. I'm actually gonna take it. This man and um, go to that. Uh, let's let's just uh, do a dismount with it, man. Copper. Oh, not up there. Not up there, man. Let's go, copper, man. Actually, man, did I drop it on the site? I'm tripping, yo. I think we dropped this, huh? Man, sometimes I just forget things. Man. Amazing drop. 10 amazing health benefits from copper vessels. We're just saying all you got to do is get the right utensils, the right ingredients, the right cookware. You put your water in these vessels, you leave it overnight, voila, you have purified copper rich water. And this is going to restore you, Negro, to be the full copper color. Drinking water on a regular basis Gold. is both important and essential to our health. Most use UV filters and RO purifiers to keep their water clean. However, an old-fashioned way of storing water has proven to be most effective, a copper vessel. Storing water in this way allows a natural purification to occur. When water is stored in this way, mold, fungi, algae, and bacteria that are naturally present in water are all killed. The water becomes safe for drinking. It is preferred that you store the water overnight or at least for four hours to obtain this pure water. Pure water, pure water. We talk pure water, but are we getting in the pure water frequency? Are we drinking pure water? We talked about different alkaline methods, man, with the uh, pink Himalayan sea salt and the key lime. Wow, what if you combine all three? Put it in a copper vessel, put it in a copper vessel. Let go, pure water, ha water, water. The mineral copper is also essential to our bodies. It can kill germs, cleanse our bodies, prevent cancer, reduce swelling, and rid our body of toxins. Despite its importance, our bodies cannot create copper. Mm. Therefore, it must be obtained through your foods, such as... Maybe their bodies can't cre create copper. Maybe they're talking about themselves. Maybe you just can't create enough to sustain your high level. You need the right ingredients. Seafood, organ meats, whole grains, lentils, nuts, seeds, chocolate. Obviously, we dodged the high, Jack, because we know a lot of this stuff now is, you know what I'm saying, GMO or pumped with sulfur. So 
We need it in our water. They said two to three glasses of this gives you enough, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> for the day. Just two or three glasses out of a copper vessel. Cereals, potatoes, peas, and some dark green leafy vegetables. If you drink two to three glasses of water that has been stored overnight in a copper vessel, you will obtain enough copper. Bang! How easy is that, man? Family, for real. Drop nation. We just need copper vessels. We just need copper vessels. Let go. Here are the top health benefits of drinking water stored in a copper vessel. One, prevent waterborne diseases. Copper very easily kills most bacteria and germs that are created within the water. Wow, so if you have a copper vessel and you're in the wilderness and you have some water and you put it in a copper vessel, it easily kills germs that are created within the water. This includes E. coli and S. aureus, which are both known to cause diarrhea, dysentery, and jaundice. Mm. Two, keeps the digestive system healthy. Copper is also known to cleanse your stomach and remove any harmful toxins. When your stomach is functioning properly, it will eliminate waste and harmful products instead of having them remain in your body. Copper can help the function of your liver and kidneys by ensuring that they absorb the correct nutrients from food. Consuming water that has been stored in a copper vessel will rid your body of any kind of infection. Simply consume a glass of water that has been stored overnight in the copper vessel on an empty stomach. On an empty stomach so you can wake up and do this, man, before you eat breakfast or whatever. Just drink a cup of water from a copper vessel that's been purified overnight, man. Easy word, man. The creator said I'll wake you up and you're going to be like, dang, you are the creator because I was fully asleep because it's this easy. It's this easy to vibrate up. This will keep your digestive system functioning well. Three, aids weight loss. Hey. Copper infused water also helps to eliminate any fat cells, Come on. which helps in losing excess body fat and maintaining a healthy body weight. Come on, family. This water is also great to drink instead of drinks that are high in calories, such as alcohol, soda, sugary drinks, and juice that can contribute to weight gain. Along with this water, it is important that you maintain a healthy diet and exercise program in order to effectively lose weight. 4. Boosts Heart Health Copper can also help with your cardiovascular health. Copper-infused water can help your body to prevent heart disease, keep your blood pressure under control, lower your cholesterol, and stabilize your heart rate. Mm. Copper has been found to be good for your overall heart health, per a 2005 study published in the European Heart Journal. It's not play play. Everybody's telling you this. Remember grandma used to have the copper bracelet? They used to put copper in her medicine. One time I had some type of little child off writers. Doctor gave me, you know what I'm saying? Or, 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 or somebody suggested something for my mom to pick up. I forgot what it was called. But it had copper in it. You know what I mean? And now they took it off the market. Because it had copper in it. It was healing people. Copper. 2005 study published in the European it hurt now they got to tell you it's good you're the copper color race family this is for you you are the cedar the incorruptible wood copper can also help to prevent plaque buildup in your arteries which allows your blood to flow to your heart more freely if your body becomes deficient in copper it can raise your cholesterol blood pressure and homocysteine and uric acid Copper-infused water can especially help those who are already at a high risk of heart disease. 5. Promotes healthy skin. Copper helps your body to produce melanin, which is responsible for the color of your eyes, hair. Copper helps your body to produce melanin. Melanated copper color. You, you didn't think it was about the melanin? When we say copper color, we're talking copper. Responsible for the color of your eyes, <coughs> hair, and skin. Melanin is important to your body, as it also helps your body from sun damage, help skin. Melanin is important. Melanin, which is responsible for the disease. Five, promotes healthy skin. Copper helps your body to produce. Copper produces melanin, restores, raises your melanin, raises your frequency. Electromagnetic field, man. Melanin which is responsible for the color of your eyes, hair, and skin. Melanin is important to your body, as it also helps your body from sun damage. 
helps your wounds to heal quickly and helps to cover scars. <laughs> it can also help with producing new skin cells so that you can have smooth and blemish-free skin. Yeah, that's why they said uh, black don't crack. Because of this, copper-infused water can help treat vitiligo, which is white patches on the skin. It even cures leprosy? 6. Beats anemia. Copper can help your body to better absorb iron. No, you need copper, not iron. They need iron. So they're talking to themselves again. Copper even helps them to absorb the iron that they need. Even copper helps the synthetic to absorb their synthetic iron. Because iron is not, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's no natural iron deposits. Iron is not natural. Iron is not natural to the earth. Let's go. Which is especially important in preventing anemia. Anemia occurs when a person's red blood cell count is low and the hemoglobin level becomes low as well. It can cause a person to feel weak, tired, have a high heart rate, have shortness of breath, and have pale skin. <gasps> pale An skin? An anemic person must eat iron-rich foods. They just so gave it away. An anemic they person just gave it away. Tired. We talking melanin and we talking have a high heart rate. pale have skin. Shortness of breath. Shortness of breath and have pale skin. We're talking vampire. We're talking the albino. We're talking what was created, the synthetic. Having to do with iron. Iron deficiency. They need more iron. That's why they need more blood. Let go. And have pale skin. An anemic person must eat iron-rich foods and or take iron supplements as instructed by their doctor. Copper-infused water can assist with the body's absorbing of iron and help to fight anemia. 7. Fights inflammation. Copper is able to fight swelling and inflammation. Because of this, copper-infused water helps with body aches and pains, as well as with arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. It can even help treat acne, asthma, sinusitis, periodontitis, hay fever, inflammatory bowel disease, and even cancer. Simply drink a few glasses of copper-infused water each day and you will experience a huge relief from your aches and pains. 8. Regulates thyroid gland. Copper is an essential mineral that your body, particularly your thyroid gland, needs to function. A deficiency in copper can prevent the thyroid from functioning properly. This is important because your thyroid helps many essential organs, including your heart, brain, liver, kidneys, and your skin. Try consuming some copper-infused water to improve the overall functioning of your thyroid. Additional tips. Pour two to three glasses of water into the copper vessel, cover, and leave it overnight or for at least six to seven hours at room temperature. Mm. Then, drink this water throughout the day. Do not refrigerate the water and mm. avoid drinking an excessive amount of it. Just three glasses of this water is enough to provide all of the health benefits. You know, avoid drinking too much. Who knows? Who knows? They're just talking to themselves. Who knows how much copper you need? Copper color race. Can you really have too much copper? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, man. Is this play play? How easy is how easy is it for you to vibe up? How easy is it for you to try up? Though rare, an excessive amount of copper can lead to copper toxicity. Rare. Over time, the copper vessel oxidizes, so you need to clean it from time to time. To clean the vessel, use lime or lemon juice. Or use that key lime, use that lemon juice to clean your copper vessel. Or a small piece of tamarind as a cleanser. Or a small piece of tamarind as a cleanser. The acidic property of lemon and tamarind will make the vessel completely clean. Ah. Do not use a coarse scrub to wash the inside of the vessel. Don't scrub it. It might scrape away copper from the vessel. If you like the video, give Ooh, it a thumbs okay. up and share it with your friends. Okay, if you want. Okay, man. Okay. Love to uh, the family link on a left, man, for dropping this copper drop, this health drop on this man. And he also dropped another one. I'll leave this link. And this one right here is deep. Um, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we have time to come back to it another time man you know what i'm saying we surfed away so all this always comes uh you know full circle man why ancient egyptians were obsessed with copper and turquoise remember turquoise is just weathered copper 
Google weathered copper and it is turquoise. Weathered copper is turquoise. Let's get a couple minutes from the top. Take it to the display. Ancient Egyptians were, and what their purpose were, you know, they lived for like uh, thirty to forty thousand years on Earth. Or maybe from ten to forty thousand is the speculation, but it is certainly more than few thousand years. So I'm a belly fly. You know, the pyramid is uh, directly pointing to the Orion because we were originally from Orion and Lyran, you know, constellation. So Orion and Lyran uh, were the base for uh, humanoid. Right, here we go. Weather cap. Let's go. This turquoise gemstone, and uh, strangely, this is the first gemstone ever mined in ancient history of humanity. And turquoise. We'll go to tur. What is turquoise? Turquoise is just nothing but concentrated copper, guys. Turquoise is an opaque blue to green. Turquoise is concentrated copper. Turquoise is copper. So, you know, say we always had this turquoise. We were crazy about turquoise and copper. Mineral that is hydrated phosphate of copper and aluminium with a chemical formula of so CuAi6. Uh, so, we can read more about the properties of turquoise and is how it is formed. So, where it was uh, mined, you know. So, as they, even the mainstream agrees. Turquoise was among the first gems to be mined and many historic sites have been depleted because these, you know, uh, aliens came, the Egyptians, the Lyran humans, and they mined out the entire copper mm. and turquoise from this region, guys. Actually, now the biggest mine is Chile in South America, but during that time, I'm sure Sinai Peninsula had the highest. I think they scanned the entire planet and found that uh, uh, Earth, uh, Egypt had the highest amount of copper. And turquoise, so they settled there. If it was in you know Philippines or Russia or China, so Egypt would have been built there actually. Sure. Uh, to copper, this is a very good website. Uh, this lady Jacqueline Talis in Al Masri, she is having a you know she is very healer and a, a yogi and a spiritually evolved person. So she does some healing sessions. So she recommends you know. Uh, all this, uh, she has studied extensive Egyptian, you know, healing techniques. So, um, she, uh, she has put all the uh, copper-based gemstone, how the ancient Egyptians used to heal people. So, you can read. You see what a turquoise is as far as the chakra. So, these stones line up with your energy centers. And this is why we had the breastplates with all these different stones, all these different centers of your energy. So I'll leave this, man. There's so much drop in it. Again, left to the fan. Link in the left. And yeah, man, I guess we'll just do a dismount on the, uh, I guess it's only right, man, to get back in. Man, we got a few different PDFs for you to choose, man. Let's go to a different one. All right. The Book of Formation, the Letters of Our Father Abraham. We're just talking about that Sefer Yetzirah, Chapter 1, by means of 32 wonderful paths of wisdom of hosts. Hey man, where's that pure water? Ah, oh, wait a minute, get that pure water flowing. While we make our dismount. Elohim of Israel, living, creator, and eternal king, El Shaddai, merciful and gracious, high and uplifted, who inhabits eternity, eternally exalted, and holy in his name and grave. And he creates his universe by these signs, by border and letter and number. Alright. What does it mean? So some of this we got uh some of this we got in the other drop. Let me go ahead a little bit on. There we go. Holy dwelling place into eternity. There are ten intangible seri, serf, serf Shut your mouth from speaking in your heart, from thinking. And if your mouth runs to speak in your heart, to think, replace or return to the place.